Okay. So uh, the first one is one-on-one -on -one battle. So we're going to build out one-on-one. -on -one. And the first one is one-on-one -on -one battlegrounds, we just call it. And it teaches a mentality of going after the ball. So I don't know if you guys in middle school, we have this a lot. I have it a lot with uh, younger teams and more timid teams where they kind of wait for the ball to come to them. And this is a fun game that helps develop that pursuit of the ball. So how it works is you guys are going to play one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to face each other. I'll put up a shot. The first girl to get two baskets wins. And you just keep battling. The ball is always live. If it hits the wall out of bounds, you keep playing unless it's an unsafe situation. You'll say dead, dead, dead. If you get stuck, you can use the coach to relay the ball through you. When you get the ball, you're allowed one dribble. You, know, you could bring it down to zero dribbles if you like, but we'll start with one dribble. All right, so I'll show you how it works a little bit. So you face each other on, we'll say, the red line. So one there, one there, and you kind of face each other. Go two on lengths away. So I'm going to put up a shot. And really, it turned into be a bit of a rebounding game. So we said, instead of just running for the ball, maybe attack your person's space. So instead of just seeing if it comes to your side or let her get it, you guys really want to be competitive. So you should be stepping into her, bang, and trying to take all this space, and she's going to try and do the same to you, right? And as soon as you take each other's space, you go pursue the ball, and whoever gets this on offense, whoever the other one's on D, if you steal, block, stuff it, or even go through the net, whoever gets the ball first is on offense. So whoever has the ball is always on O, and you're always battling for it. You ready? And if you get stuck, you're allowed one dribble, or you can use me and cut. Oh, okay, cut. Put up quick. Go get it. Get after it. Get after it. Keep going. Get after it. Your ball. You shoot. shoot. No, don't even pass. Yeah, score. Get after it. And you just keep going right away. Go up and score. You can pivot. You can find one dribble and find a shot. And just keep pursuing. It's like, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You can take a dribble and score. You can pass to me. Good. Get after it. There's one. Keep going. Keep going. No, don't wait. Don't let her get it. You can grab two in a row. You can use one dribble. Rip and go to the rim if you like. Go get it. Go get it. Yeah. Good. Your ball. Yeah, keep playing. Try to not use your dribble unless you need it. Right, right away. Yeah. Pass the cut. Whoop. There's one. Boom. Game. Right? So she had two. She had zero. So it could have been 2-1. It could have been whatever. So they're a little hesitant. The more you play, the more everyone's just flying after the ball. Bang, 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 bang. So that kind of develops that aggressive mentality. We play that almost every other practice just to get going after we're warm. Right? It gets tiring too, right? And what you learn is a lot of the kids, they catch it, and when they got the ball, they, they took a comfort dribble, right? Because we said one dribble. Now we can say no dribble. So when they get it, they got to learn to pivot and finish, lean in, put it up on the rim, go get it. So it just develops that. I know you guys are enthusiastic and want to try that one. We'll pass on that. So the next one would be we're going to go, now we're going to work on a front. That's just to kind of get the mentality going. So now they're each going to go on the blocks. So it's good. We've got the old school blocks here. Maybe just on the FIBA block, stand like this. And you're both going to face me. And what we're going to, you're both facing, there could be a coach up top. And really you could break this down first and work on, I got your spot. You can work on a front pivot. So the coach, you can be the coach, and you throw it to me. So the coach will pick who they throw it to, right? I'm on offense. She'll be on defense. So as soon as the ball is snapped out of the fingertips, you'll be running over to guard. And what we're really trying to do is instead of just turn and put up a quick shot, which you may have to do in a game if the person's quick, is actually on the catch do a full front pivot and get my, give the defense my thigh and my shoulder and bang, try and finish leaning in. So maybe the first few ones you do with your kids are just pass, and you could rep it out, one and all. Catch, front pivot, keep it high, side to side, both just working on that. And then now we play the competitive game. And the game, you want to try and really enforce that. You can maybe even give an extra point if they do the front pivot versus just a point for scoring. You guys comfortable with that front pivot? Let's just see real quick. So one and all, throw it to you, go, front pivot. And then, yeah, without using your dribble, though. That's good, yeah. So again, front pivot, good. All right, front pivot, don't play defense yet, just front pivot, good. I would say you want to turn your body so that you're actually parallel to the baseline. Because if I open up and I go here, I still allow a person to come in and make a play on the ball. 
But if I do a full front pivot and give my, my, my thigh and my shoulder, I can bring the ball away. The defense has to hit my body first, and I finish away from the D. So that's working on a full 180. Good. And then start to lean in because you're going to draw contact, right? Imagine someone's coming to block you. Good. Oh, I'm tall enough to get that still. Okay. All right. So full front pivot. Imagine someone's coming, turn and jump into them. Yeah, full turn with your chest facing the you. Your chest should face the mats. Good. All right. Yeah, it's getting better. Make sure you turn all the way. You're stopping kind of quarter turn. Yeah, so you really basically want to come. So you get the ball, you front turn, and you're almost jumping into me. And you want to use your outside hand. Okay? So now we'll play. They already know that habit. We built it over maybe a couple practices. And now the competition series. So you're both, you don't know which way it's going. If I go to her, you're sprinting over to play D. If I go to her, it's the other way. Good. And what we do is we have kind of groups of twos. So you have a couple coaches at each end. If you've got six, 12 kids, six, bang, 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 just pair it up. Same size and ability. And we just keep score. All right, keep your score. One, one, zero. Ready? Get over there. Good. And if you want to make it a little more challenging, take a step inside the green. And just inside. Ready? Try and, try and do that. Still do that front pivot. So here, we'll give you one point for scoring, one point, if, and we'll give you two points if you score at the front pivot. So you get a full front pivot and score is two points. Good. Good. There you go. She had a full front pivot for the double points. Hey, you like that. Good. Okay. So we play that, and then we have our games. We do that for four or five minutes. Now I need another person to play defense. Who wants to play D? I'm going to pick somebody. Let's go. There we go. We got one. Okay. Huh. So you're on D. You're in the middle. You guys take a step out now. So you're straddling that far line, maybe. So now we're going to play small space, two on one, small space decision making. So you're in the middle. You don't know. You're on D. They're both on offense. So it's two on one. So if I throw to her, she still does her front pivot. You try and score. So you still try and do the exact same thing you worked on. But if she gets over, you got a partner over there you're allowed to pass to. So you're allowed one pass, zero dribble. So the decision is going to be, can I get this done well and finish and have my teammate rebound? Because that's a good option too. You don't always have to pass. If you pass in small space too late or too slow, it's better for the defense. Turnovers happen. I'd rather get on the rim and she get a good chance on old board. So you still want to work on that quick bang or maybe a pocket pass or a quick little zip pass. You know, we had some guys who were, as soon as it came, they were doing this, bang, bang, and they're just touch passing it right over the VSD, which is, which is pretty tricky, but we still want to work on this. So we can give two points for that finish, and we can give a, you know, you can rate it. The touch pass is worth one. A pass off the front pivot or a score off the front pivot is worth two. You can do that. Okay, you right? Sure. No stupid questions here. Yeah. Ever. I'll go. <laughs> you would probably have to go to the ball because she's going to do a front pivot and score on you for two points. Okay. So you're, you're going to be part of a team. So we usually break this up into colors. And we'll just rotate. So we'll have black and white. And as you come on, two white, one black. Next time, two black, one white. And you play as a team and keep score. So if you have, we have our full team, we could do that. Right, right now, we're just getting reps. Okay, so you'll stay on D for like five times. And because you're going that way, I'm going to push you to her first. Boom, two points, front pivot, keep going. Ready? Good. And a rebound, boom, good. Keep playing, it's live. So remember the drill we did before, right? No pausing and waiting for the ball. We're trying to develop that mentality, which is good. You're going right to the glass. You've got to get a stop. So a stop or a score ends it. Good. Boom. Get after it, get after it, good, get after it, good. You got one stop, and they got one score, right? But they got two points, they did a front pivot. Okay, and when we're passing, again, we want to try and keep that crisp, like it was in the air too long. So it was a good pass, but then she had time to recover. So if you zipped overhead or give a quick bounce pass, she would have had a chance to score. Good block, get after it, get after it, keep playing. Good, no out of bounds. Good, two stops. No out of bounds in this game. Good, that's much better. Boom. Okay, you guys get the idea? Now we need one more. So one more person. 
Anyone? This is a, all right. So now, you, now we're going to play 2v1, same thing. One defender is here on the free throw line, and one is just kind of where you are on the blue line. So you guys take one step farther out. Okay, so they're in, the sh they're in the, what we call a short corner almost. And now we're going to do the similar thing. But I'm now I'm going to throw it to one or the other. So slow motion, that goes there. First, first defender. Okay. <laughs> Rewind, yeah, slow motion, just pause, pause for a sec. First defender would go to the ball, freeze. So she goes to the ball and you would drop and take away the layup. So we're working a little bit on defensive rotation, that's natural, and also small space decision making. So the question is now, can you do a front pivot and score, or make a move and score, or give your teammate the pass before the drop happens of the defender? And then you just play. And we'll give you one dribble, one pass max. If you get an offensive rebound, you get that one dribble and one pass again. It's like a card. I get to use one dribble, I get to use one pass. As soon as you, as soon as you shoot, you get a new card. Question? Any questions? Anybody can say anything anytime. We're good? Ready? Good. Okay, stop. One pass, right? So that's the stop for the D. You only allowed one pass. So you, the, if you decide to pass, it better, be it better be because your teammate has a chance to shoot. You understand? Otherwise, you should dribble and try and create something. You don't just give a pass to give a pass because you're stuck or you're done. You're doing it to give her an advantage. And that's what this drill is kind of teaching. You only allowed one pass, you only allowed one dribble. Good. Good. And play, and play the rebound. Good. Now you're supposed to be in the free throw line. You're cheating. Get up here. All right. And you're outside the lane, so we've got a little more space. Good. Where's the front pivot? Don't forget the front pivot. And then get after the ball. If you miss, uh, hey, good players shoot 50%. So the half of these are going to be rebounds, right? Get after it. Get at it. Okay, good. Dribble. You got to dribble. You can dribble attack. One pass. You got to get a shot up. And then we play rotation. So that's our little build up. Normally that takes 20 minutes because we're competing and playing. I give you a break, but we just demoed it. So that's all for that. Thank you very much. Any questions on that? No? I don't want to have you guys stand all the time because it's going to be boring. You're, gonna, gonna, you're not going to absorb as much. Um, this one could also be built out. I'm sorry, the next one could be built on the three on three. So, Basically, we just added different pieces. This is low, so you could add whatever piece you want and create an advantage and have limit some rules. So when your drills, if this is a drill that was created by somebody that I stole and maybe changed, I can't even remember. And you guys can change any drill you like, just as long as you're trying to work on things, add rules to reinforce your whatever you're trying to get out of the drill uh, for competition-wise, for passing, for footwork, whatever you like, time-wise. So you just keep adding and twisting that. Anything to add, Randy? <laughs> okay, so now we're, uh, we got another one-on-one -on -one series. I wanted to do that one first to get warmed up, but, uh, but um, actually, you know, we're, Randy and I were going to ask you, because we were here last time, but some stuff you guys might, I have a few ideas, he has a few ideas, but is there anything specific you guys want us to cover while we're here today? Like, what do, do, you, what do you want? Do you want drills? Like, what do you... Well, I want a zone defense, zone offense. This stuff, yeah. Well, some of the stuff we're doing here is like that. It's training stuff, just getting better at basketball and decision making. It's not specific to an offense or a defense. So we're going to get to some of that, and it actually will work for you because you could have, in that stuff there, you could build your stuff up. With, how many coaches do you have? Two. Two? So you could have one end and one end. It's a little harder. Then when we get moving, this stuff is, they do it on their own. You can walk around. So those are the drills you want to kind of find where you don't always have to pass or be the one coaching that station. I think Ra Randy actually has been working with some stuff with a youth group, a new kind of four out four out offense. So he could probably give you some help with that. He's probably done a pass cut fill, which we do a lot of. Um, we so either go either go five out yeah. or four out one in, which is what we choose to do. It just creates better five spacing five. other than yeah yeah. Um, do we have that handout here? That 
Yeah. I do have it in my bag, actually. We've just got a handout we can show you later on. It's, it's kind of the, what we're using right now with our high performance program, but you can use it at any level. Yeah, it's really, really quite good, and it teaches you just how just to progress. Layers, yeah. yeah. We probably, you know, want, at this level, we want them to be able to not pigeonhole them into a position, but yeah. get them to be able to do everything. Yeah, yeah you, everyone should play everywhere. Yeah for the most part. You have some kids that you may, might want to put inside until they feel more comfortable, but we can talk about that too. Yeah. Uh, but the piece that goes hand in hand with that is developing all the skills so they can play any position. Because yeah. we've got a lot of kids who oh, I want to learn every position, I want to bring the ball up. But they literally can't get the ball from there to there with any pressure. So you say you have to put some work in on the skill first, and then we can play all the different positions, right? And athletic ability and mobility, you got to be able to move and guard. Anything else you want to maybe touch on today? Oh, the dribbling. Warm-up one? Yeah. I didn't bring the balls, but I have the cones. We could, we could do that. We could do that, get you guys moving again so you're not standing around. That's real quick. So, yeah. Do you guys have tennis balls here as a phys ed teacher? Yeah. So we'll do that. We'll get you. That's good because I don't want you guys to stand in the whole time. So that's a dribbling hand-eye coordination? Yeah, it's a warm-up game. It's, it's a dribbling game. It's hand-eye coordination. It's actually so, spatial awareness as well. Let's see. Let's yeah, let's just do let's, it. Let's, let's spread them out. And, and let's Marco, you're the one who brought it up, man. Spread these around. Let's go. Within the, uh, within the volleyball court. Actually, you can put them anywhere. Like volleyball court, expand a little bit. Everyone needs a basketball. Everyone will need a basketball for this drill. And they have to be far apart. Hey, they can't be too close. Remember all the guys that cheated? Yeah, you got to make them run or dribble somewhere. Everyone needs a ball. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Good, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no problem. Uh, every other one, not, you got to leave some empty, eh? Oh, <laughs> what are those? They look like hard balls, they're not hard. These are soft. Oh, okay. Does it matter? No, they're good. Just throw it down anywhere. Yeah. Pretty random. Okay, everyone have a ball? Marco, you can have this one if you want. The ball's right there. So as a refresher, for those of you who were here last time, this is called cones and tennis balls. It's a very fancy name. Uh, but basically it's a ball handling, hand-eye coordination, spatial awareness drill. And it's a warm-up drill. So it's a little fun, gets your heart rate going, works on some skill. Um, the object of the game is to dribble and find a dot, I mean a cone, that has a tennis ball in it. And then we, we want to work on squatting and lunging. So we don't want to work on, on this, right? We want to get up to a cone, find it, and we want to sit with our head up and dribbling. So our dribble's going from high to low, we're keeping it. And as I pick up the ball, I should be scanning the floor to find out where my next open cone might be. That could be current or about to happen. Like I see one girl running to grab a cone. I think, okay, that's going to be open in one second. Just like in the game of basketball, stuff changes. So it helps with reading the floor. And then I want to go dribble. I have to find a new cone. I have to squat or lunge. And I got to place it. That's one. And I yell one. Now I have to go find another ball. I can't use the same one. So we're constantly running around, scanning, figuring out which balls and cones are available, and we're racking up the score. We'll give limitations. So the first one is right hand dribble only, left hand pick and place. Then we'll flip it to left hand dribble only, right hand pick and place, then we'll do a freestyle one, do whatever you want. Okay? And we'll have a clock. We have a clock. This is always interesting. I need seconds. Oh, that's not good enough. My cell phone. Randy, you got a clock? What? Hit your stopwatch. No, stopwatch. Ready? Use my, hold on. So let's start. <laughs> let's get everyone to start on the sideline here. Ready? Just run a, hold on. Run a stopwatch. We'll see how long it takes. No, what are you doing? Cheater. So I think, I think usually groups get it in like 45, 50 seconds. And we'll do like three sets, only three minutes, but you guys will find like your heart rate gets up pretty quick. 
Randy's going to time it. What do, you, what do you want, a minute? Just, no, however long it takes him to, for someone to win. Oh, okay. First person to 10. <laughs> you got to let us hear every count. One, two, three, go! I hear it once. If your ball doesn't stay in the cone, it doesn't count. You got to keep it on the cone. Four. I hear four. You have another uh, warm up game or two you want to try? Okay, you do that next. Sorry. I hear eight. I hear nine. Ten. Winner. Who is ten? Who is the first ten? It's over there. Okay, what time, Randy? Oh, sorry. <laughs> A minute. One minute. He, he, he fell asleep for five seconds. Fifty-five seconds. That was good. Let's go over here. We got another one. Let's go three sets. Now we're doing right, left hand dribble. Only a only left hand dribble. This might go into a minute and a half here with left hand dribble. Ready, go. Oh, Carter, let's go. Let's go. Speed, not slowing down, speeding up. Squat or lunge, squat. Squat or lunge. Try and jump stop over the cone or lunge to the cone. Left hand only, left hand only. Ten, got a winner. Time. One on one. One other minute. Pretty good. All right, last one. That's two minutes of work. Look at this huffing and puffing here. <laughs> That's only two minutes of work, literally. Two minutes and one second. Okay, last one is freestyle. Do whatever you like. Any hand you want. You got to pick in place. If the cone rolls, if the ball rolls off the cone, it doesn't count. I saw a few balls rolling away. <laughs> so you got whoever sees that, you got to call that person out. Let them know it doesn't count. And I'm, I know you guys are older and all had hip replacements and knee surgeries, but I see so many people like, eh, right? Make sure we either jump stop. So teach the kid, jump stop and sit, or take a big lunge and find it. Okay, one or the other. I'm trying to work on. It. Now, you guys may not have to do it, but your kids should do it, right? You guys can try. Ready? Oh, you look hey. Go! <laughs> Let's go. Freestyle, whatever you like. You cross over, change hands. Hey, you know these people pretty well, right? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna get you to split them into two teams for me. Yeah, just roughly, yeah. I hear six. Sevens. Eight. Hurry nine. Ah! Oh! Ten, we got a winner! Hey! Yeah, oh. 50. What? Fifth seconds. freestyle dropped it for 10 seconds. Or you just get it warm. Good job. Coach Cassano is going to get the next one, but maybe get a quick drink. I hear a lot of heavy breathing. <laughs> quick drink. Balls away. Hey, balls away. Quick drink. If you could help us grab the cones and tennis balls, that would help as well. You got a team. Yeah. Okay. Uh, come on over here. So 
I don't know if you've done this before. We've done, we're do, we'll do a game called Pass Peg. All right, and it's again, Dan, Dan did the dribbling one. I'm, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that little game there because uh, we've done that one. The girls, at, my, my girls actually asked for that a couple of weeks ago just to play. It's fun, but you're also working on skill. All right, with the right hand, left hand, and then random and stuff like that with uh, getting low. So that was good. So we also do, uh, we do also do passing, some sort of passing every day. Okay, and a, and a fun way to do it is to play uh, something called pass tag. And I think some of you have done it before. Yeah. All right, so you're in teams. Okay, so it's going to be obviously shirts against the, uh, against the pennies. Okay, we're going to designate the area. Uh, I think we'll use, we'll use the volleyball court. So red team get inside the volleyball court for now to start. Yeah, we need one ball. Here you go. Yeah, six. And we'll start it this way. Uh, so red team get down on that half of the volleyball court just to start. Let's get the white team over here, please. Okay, so you, you must stay in the bounds, boundary lines. All right, and the object of the game is for this team, this team collectively, you must pass without traveling and moving, passing the ball, and you must tag, okay, you must tag the red team. You guys can run, move anywhere you want within the volleyball court. All right, so some strategy involved here, so you gotta work as a teammate. So if we're going for him, you can move. Okay, we gotta move. Okay, and <laughs> you gotta be able to catch, pass and catch. And then you want to surround somebody, all right? So, that, so you must run and communicate, cat, and you can't, it's not dodgeball. Some kids get ticked off and they fire, start firing the ball, but it's not dodgeball, all right? You must, you must tag the person with the ball. You got that? And they, they can't step out. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, if they step out of bounds, they're out, all right? No, we'll just knock them all out. We, uh, what we do is we time it, just like Dan did just now. So we will time this team, how long it takes to get everybody out, and then, how, and then we'll flip it. We'll flip it again. You guys ready? Maybe come on up. Are you ready? Are you guys ready? And go. Go to somebody. You got to. Try and trap somebody. Hey. Okay, go to you gotta go to somebody. Try you and trap it. somebody. There you go, there you go, there you go. Hey. Go go get somebody. Yeah, now you got it. Keep corral passing. Them, corral keep, them, keep it moving, keep it moving. There you go. Or you can just wear them down until they get too tired. <laughs> right back, right back, right back, right back. Chop them, chop them. Pass and go. move, pass and move, pass and pa move. There you go. Go get somebody else. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six. Surround them. Five. And time. Okay, give you a quick rest. We're going to flip it around, uh, give the other team a chance. We got better. <laughs> little, little huffing and puffing. <laughs> hey, hey, don't forget, there's a little bit of strategy here, right? Well, you guys yeah, got to so move as a group sure, sure and kind of corral. Here. It's like sheep herding. Yeah, just start, just random assault. But the idea is you must try and trap somebody. Go to the person you want to tag. A little strategy here, I like this. Ah, here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Go, keep going. You're still good, you're still good. They, they got to tag you. They can't throw it at you. Don't travel. Keep it moving. Go get somebody, oh, yeah. go get somebody. Pick on somebody. Call a target. Oh, yeah. Call a go target, get. who are you going to get? Lock in on a target. No, no, you're still in. He dropped the ball. No, you're still in. They got to tag you without dropping the ball. Oh, good job. Good job. Tag and hang on to the ball, guys. Keep it moving. Where's down the chain? We're down the chain. Oh, 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 you 
you got her. Close it in. Close it in. And time. Very good. Very good. Okay, so that's one. Should we just, uh, why don't you just. Whistle do, ultimate, whistle ultimate. Yeah, let's do whistle ultimate while they're in teams. Let them catch their breath. <laughs> okay, but that's, that's a really good passing game, obviously. Come on, and right. we'll, we'll show you another one. Take some team weight, but you need this other one that we, we almost do every other day also. Come on in close. We'll, we'll talk while you catch your breath. We'll explain the you rules. You had a question? Uh, you played that game? Yeah. You get tagged. You get your own ball and you dribble and tag. Yeah. Yeah, we do that. We make kids, yeah, yeah. go out and, yeah. 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 Hopefully it doesn't take very long. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little different. Yeah, it's just a hand-eye passing catch totally. game. Yeah. The strategy is, you know, we got to communicate. We want to get oh, you. Totally. Yeah. So it's a good I thing like that it. way. Counterintuitive to yeah. basketball, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So this one here is the opposite of what you're saying. It's called whistle ultimate. We did it the last time we were here, I think. Uh, so what it is is two teams. Have you guys played ultimate before, where you pass and catch and advance the ball down the floor? So for this gym, because the baseline is pretty close. We'll yeah. say the blue line extended is the touchdown zone. Okay, so I'm passing with my partner. We're all, we're all red. Pass and catch, pass and catch. If I catch my last one like this, I gotta make one more. We gotta get two feet down inside the touchdown zone for a touchdown. That's a touchdown. Bang. So that's the object of the game. Pass and catch with your team and get a touchdown. Now the rules are, the first one is no overhead passes. So anybody who puts the ball over the head to make a pass, you hit a whistle, you got to drop it. Done. Turnover. Okay? And we say that because most of the overhead passes turn into turnovers or are slow or weak passes. They're very predictable because when you're up here, you can't do too much, right, other than pass. And you raise your center of gravity and you get thin and a good defender could kind of lean on you and kind of get you going back and it make you throw a bad pass. So all the pass you want to do is off our shoulders and hips. We'll call it a little power box, rip, rip, like here nice and strong, and then push pass out of there instead of these overhead passes that a lot of kids do when they're young, especially if they're bigger. They're taller or it gives them a little more strength, so they try and do that. But it's a habit we try to break, okay? So no overhead passes. Ball cannot hit the floor, period. And the reason we say that is because we want clean passes that go straight lines. We don't want these bloopers, or we don't want people doing like sloppy catches. So the way we ref that is no bounce passes as well. Even though that's a great pass, just for the refing of the game, the ball can't hit the floor. Clean, clean catches, clean passes. That's rule number two. Rule number three is no blooper passes. So I joke around with kids, say no dead duck passes, like you're hunting ducks and you, you know, they're flying through the air, they get hit by a shotgun and then So no passes are up in the air, right? So clean line passes. If I throw a pass, it's kind of like I'll whistle it down. Even if it might be not a bad pass for someone streaking and kind of hitting that pocket, like not in general for basketball, I want to get away from that. So again, we're forming general habits, and to, to referee it, we get rid of that. Another one is no turtling. So again, what do turtles do when they get scared? Tuck up into their shell. So if I'm dribbling, this big defender comes at me, and I pick the ball up, we don't want to do this, right? We want to either go by him, but if I do pick it up, I want to pivot, rip the ball, hips, hips, shoulder, shoulder. If he crowds me, we want to do what we call a space pivot, where I step between his legs, give my shoulder and hips, and then I step back and create some space so now I can have angles to pass. So we show that to the kids early, and then it becomes part of this game, a habit-building thing. One other rule we add at some point, two rules, is uh, a deflection on a pass is an automatic turnover. So if you're tracing me and I throw a pass, you get a hand on it, and she just touches it, Right, turnover, automatic, because we want, again, clean passes. I want to pass fake and make sure I'm passing away from defense. And the last one would be one second holds. So you only have one second to make a decision. One Mississippi. So I can't just sit here. You know, I got to know as the ball is coming, I should know my teammate, take a little peek and scan the floor. I know my teammate streaking down the floor, give her a pass, okay? That also means your teammates have to cut and move and be open. So we usually add that one a bit later. So we'll save that one. We'll save the defensive one, the defensive deflection, and the one second hold for like two minutes into this game. We'll just add that. And you can judge depending on how well your group's doing, how fast you want to add it. Okay? So we're good. A lot of rules. You guys remember them? Shirts, you're going that way. 
Red, you're going that way. Ready? Everybody ready? We'll play to five. And we might modify it to three. <laughs> See how you're done. Ready? Get after it. Let's go. Every time you hear a whistle, you drop and turn. Good. Woo. Leave it, leave it. Hey, leave it. Get back right away. As soon as you hear the whistle, the change. One rule I didn't talk about is uh, if there's a turnover in the front, just we say the three-point line and down, so draw a line, right? You have to find a coach. So you grab it, outlet to me, everyone scatter and move, and I'll re-enter the ball. Because sometimes it's a turnover, there's people there that just touch it, it's a too quick of a touchdown. So we give a little bit of a buffer. If, it, if there's a turnover or a violation inside the quarter court, we call it the quarter court here, find a coach, scatter, and we'll play. So it's shirt ball, right? Space, let's go, guard him. Guard him, here we go. Hit, hit the ground, hit the ground, leave it, just drop it, drop it. Yeah, it's not yours. <laughs> Offense to defense. Back over, all basketball rules still apply, let's go. Hit the ground, let's go, leave it, grab it, red, red, you gotta grab and go, scatter. Good, let's go, go. Oh, he almost did it, he pulled it back. Go. Quick, quick. Good luck, good luck. Oh. One more. Oh. Hey, she's over. Sorry, sorry, I was looking for the baseline. Uh, yeah, I said the blue line extended. Touchdown. One nothing red, let's go. Come on, shirts. <laughs> Wrong team, let's go. <laughs> Blooper pass, drop it, let's go. Pivot, pivot, chest, I mean shoulder passes or hip passes, let's go. One all. Tie game. Just like the Grey Cup, let's go. Good. Keep moving. Gotta move, guys, gotta move. Let's go. Come on, Marco, let's go. Nice. Okay, we're going to play the three. We're going to add those other two rules. Deflections, if a, if a defense just gets a hand on the pass while it's in the air, on that turnover, one Mississippi to make a decision and get rid of the ball. So this is also a good time to talk to kids about how to get open? Correct. You can, this game, so we call it whistle ultimate. This is a behavior <laughs> modification tool. Whatever you want to enforce, you can have no rules except for that. So how, how, how to seal and get open? Yeah. In, this, in this situation, I'd say cut and, because there's so much space, I'd say cut and get open, as opposed to posting up. But you could do your swim stroke, and you could say, you know, sit on the outside, make sure it's a foot fight between his high foot and my high foot, and get, a, get your butt and shoulder and pass away. You can do an L cut, you can do a spin seal, where I run right into them, I split them, and then I sit. Oh, okay. Well, we could, we could teach that separately, and then you could incorporate it into the game. No, that's, yeah. that's a good question, though. Because, yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah. You, you do want to do stuff like so that. So the good thing about this game is it's a habit-forming game. So whatever you want to work on, whether it's quick passing, whether it's sealing, whether it's squaring up to the, we, there's a rule we do, if you don't square up and look down the floor, it's a violation because some people are just catching and tossing, they're not even looking down the floor. Whatever habit you want to enforce, you can incorporate into the rules. And if there's too many rules, take a bunch away and just focus on your top two or three. Okay? Okay, now we added those two rules. One second to make a decision, which will increase movement, and you guys should be passing the ball quicker, making quicker decisions. Go! One second hold, find a coach, find a coach. Let's go, move, red. Yeah, I turned it over. <laughs> One second, let's go. Good. This way, no touchdown, no catch. Let's go. Oh. 
Back over. Shirt ball. Shirt. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Shirt ball. Drop it. Yeah, go. Ball can't hit the floor. Let's go. Good. Travel ball. Let's go. <laughs> Keep it down. Keep it low. Back over. Let's go. And you know what? You're probably right. It's three points of contact, but I'm old school. Let's go. One point. One point of contact. I'm on the old rules. Now, let's go. Move it. One Mississippi. Good. Deflection. Red ball. One Mississippi. One Mississippi. One Mississippi. One Mississippi. Good. Game. Hey, good. Okay, 2-1. That was good. And as soon as we added the one, we're not going to go to three. Yeah, I don't want to kill you guys. Yeah. What are you talking about? No, we're not even tired. <laughs> That's funny. You're not even tired? <laughs> she might not be tired. Yeah, was there an overhead? Did I miss it? Oh, I called you out. Tie game. No, come on in. Come on in. So you notice that as soon as we had the one second thing, you guys got much quicker. And it was pretty good. It wasn't too many turnovers. You just worked harder and you started to, it forced you to make faster decisions. You guys should do that game a lot with your yeah. kids. Yeah. It, it, it's fun. And the weakest skill in basketball, guys and girls, is passing. And decision making. Yeah, and decision Pass, making. Catch, yeah, decision who's making. open, who's not. Uh, it's, you know, the one tweak I made because we did it so much is I, I added in, now we're going to, rather than get a touchdown, now we're actually looking to score a basket. And they, they love that. They yeah. got all fired up again because now we're actually passing, trying to cut without dribbling, trying to score a basket there. So I just tweaked that at the end and they, they like that a lot. So play the same game, but maybe add that in. Gives a little bit more motivation, but uh, yeah, you should do that game often, I we, think. We use that with our seven, I use that with my 17 year boys for entry team every, every practice of the summer. We played a 10 minute game, the exact same two teams. And they had a little grudge match. That was our warm up game. But we played and we got way, way better. That group was not very good at passing, catch, making decisions. And by the end of the summer, they're actually pretty good with it. And we just, and they the enjoyed the it. The university teams do it. Yeah. Like I've seen Kirby and them. They, I've gone out and they, they're doing it as part of their warm up too. So yeah, you should, it's a fun game and you're working on good skill. So. Any questions on that? Good. Okay, quick drink and we'll keep moving on. We're going to go work on getting open. So some of those stuff. cuts you guys wanted on getting open, <laughs> we'll add some of that. Teach a little bit of that. There's four ways that we kind of have. And then we'll get to some one-on-one -on -one play. Okay. Yeah, no, no, we'll, we'll give you, we'll yeah, give you yeah, four yeah. ways. I mean, we, we talk about that all the time, too. So, yeah. Hey, so let's get Randy. You be up there. You can pass. You can be the coach. Let's get, uh, you wanna, can you move? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, first way, first way of getting open we'll work on is just a blast cut. So that's the one that, being used a lot with our FIBA spacing. It's just cut. And if you're not open, back cut and get out. And we create a double gap for driving. The old school stuff is a lot of fighting to get that spot so you can run the next piece of the offense. Where a lot of the new stuff is if you're not open, we go to the next thing. But we'll go, go through all of them, okay? So a blast cut would be if the ball's over there, he might be you know, kind of denying and a little bit of help. Uh, you wouldn't be really close. But I just basically sprint up. And I'd try and get the ball. I'd try and beat him to the catch. And on the pass, I would rip and attack or curl and go. So that's just a straight sprint. So we call that a blast cut. That's the easiest one. And if he got real aggressive and he's in the passing lane, tried to steal it, plant, back door, bang, I go in for my layup. Or make a play. Okay? So the easiest one by far. The next one would be a V cut. So I got, I'm supposed to get the ball somewhere in the wing, and Randy's going to go screen for him, and we're looking for next piece of the offense. Again, he's a real good defender. He's pretty aggressive. So I would just, I would have to take him away from where I want to get the ball, so I'd make it a little bit of a V. So I go into him and actually try and get my foot over top of his high foot, so he's still denying. So he's be flipping around like this probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'd probably try and get my foot over here and then pop out. Inside foot, square up and play. So that's a V cut. So again, my turn to get the ball. I'm waiting in the offense. I'd go into my defender, try and get over top, and then step out and play a little bit of a V. Or if I'm top down, I could be here. 
and I could take him down, pop, and then come right back to the ball and play. An L cut, so again, you can just rep these out one and all with a pylon or a dummy coach, then play live. An L cut would be, if I'm along the lane line, I'm just gonna go up like an L, but this is usually when you're bigger or have a big speed advantage. So just and play over top of a bit? Just, yeah, denying, just he's like, this guy's not touching the ball, don't let him touch the ball. And I just say, okay, I'm just gonna walk him up, keep walking him up until it's my turn to have the foot fight. Then I change my speed, and I wanna get my foot over top of his foot, and then step out into an L, and then I got an angle to the rim, right? So walk him up, especially if you're a bigger guy, you can just put an arm bar here, and I try and step over top and out, and then now we play one-on-one. -on -one. L cut, V cut, blast cut. The last one is if you have a really good defender, you can't really shake. This guy's on me, he's all over me, he's really fast, he's strong. A thing I could do is I could do a spin seal. So I could just jam my leg between his foot. So it'd be the high leg. I would just split him, and then I sit him. Bang. So if, maybe if I'm walking down, it'd be more when you're walking down or trying to post up. Guy's all into you. You take the high foot. I split his legs, and then I spin. I put my ass into him, and I create space to get the ball. Okay, so you work on those. Those are the four that I know. You got any other ones? Oh, we just call that one split and sit. Split okay? and sit. Yeah, yeah split. Split, split and, sit. and sit. So yeah. you split the crotch, sit on his thigh, yeah. or a spin seal. So V cut, L cut, blast cut, and split and sit. And again, you just teach that slowly. You can do one on all against a dummy, one on all in air. Then you have like a guide. You can play a little one on one out of it. And you can call the different cuts and then end up playing one on one. Because the hard part about all this defense is if you're trying to get open, you're on offense is I'm denying and he catches the ball. So defensively, you get the ball. I'm in a deny stance, and now I go, go, go to an on-ball stance. So deny, I'm kind of in the lane, but look, I gave him a straight driving line to the rim. So to go from here to here on the catch is pretty hard. It's easy for coaches to say, but in the game, it's pretty hard because you give up that advantage. You know, you're lunging for the ball. He's already ripping and going to the rim. You're beside him. So these drills, I'm working getting open, just playing one-on-one -on -one defense, you're good. Okay, anything else on that? Uh, no, it's pretty good. You wanna, what? You wanna move on to that drill, the which one? one or no? The curl cut one-on-one -on -one stuff? No, or which one? Korean pass. Oh, Korean pass. So Randy has a drill that we can get into a little more active one-on-one -on -one after you've kind of reviewed this and they know it and they're just gonna work on it in a chaotic situation. You can go ahead. Yeah, to, just to sort of compliment this, to make it live, can I get yourself on the baseline? Okay, and can I get you right here? Yeah, free, free, just free throw line extended. And can I get you at center? All right, so you're on the sideline. <laughs> and we're gonna pass. Okay, now you're gonna run to the you're gonna run to the circle. You become the point guard. All right, you're gonna pass. Okay, you become a defender. You give him the ball. Now what? Ha okay, now no, hold up. You're, you're gonna be defending him. So what you now Three what you do? Drill, yeah. You're gonna run to the baseline. You, and you're you're defending. You're dribbling over, you're the point guard. Bring it over so you're defending him any way you want. Okay, now, once there's eye contact between the two of you, you must get open somewhere. Okay, there you go. Okay, right, okay, so what was that called? That's a blast cut, all right? That was a good read. He saw communication, blast cut to get open. All right, and there, from there we just go live one-on-one. -on -one. We just go live one-on-one, -on -one. okay? We've probably done some one-on-one -on -one stuff before that, but now we go live one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, demonstrate one more time. That was, that was really good. What's that called, so, Coach? So what we do now, what we, we, what we do now is that uh, once you've gone, you move up one, you come down, and we just keep rotating that way just so everyone plays everywhere. But you got a question? What do you call it? Well, yeah, you're, you're going to pass to him, and he's going to bounce the baseline. He's going to bounce the baseline, all right, and you're going to defend him any way you want. You can overplay him. You can sag off him a little bit, whatever you want, and then he's got to figure out how to get open. He did a blast cut there really well, but if you play him a little tighter this time, he might have to step to you, into you, run a V cut. He might have to spin, go back cut, back door. Okay? Let's try it one more time. Point guard, you're defending. There you go, bounce the baseline. Okay, dribble over. See the ball, see the ball, get see open, the ball. Get open. Pretty good. There, there, exactly. Okay, good. Okay, so that. That's just one of the drills we can do, okay? It's pretty, uh, 
and then we rotate, and we, we just alternate sides so you can get, if you've got the full gym, you can get your whole team going. Yeah, we have one, once they finish, another group just goes up that way. We've got another group working over there, so right away you've got 12 kids working. Okay? Randy, what do you right. call it? What's that called again? We just call that Korean, Korean passing to Korean one passing on one. I just stole it off Mike McKay from Basketball Canada. It's, okay. a, it's a nice drill. We use it quite often, actually. Okay? Did you notice in the live one-on-one, -on -one, what cut did he use every time to get open? The blast cut. Yeah. So most of the time, you can actually get open pretty well with that. You know, just because of the way the offenses are and spacing and with the skill level. So, but before all that happens, all of you as coaches, you got to teach your kids how to run the floor. And so what we tell our girls, well, our girls that, that I coach, the first, once we get and we're running down the floor, the first two spots they, get, they, they run to is the corner two spots to stretch out the defense. All right? Yeah, so once we get possession of the ball, we're going to the outlet, and the other two people are filling those corner spots right away. And then we come down the floor, and we, we try to get into some sort of offense. So what's the key for them to bounce up? Bounce the baseline, ideally. Well, I, you know, yeah. If, when, when do they pop up the, the center? When, when do they go? Yeah. That's, uh, as the point guard comes down, you've got to start reading that. And depending on where he or she goes, which side, there's, uh, once I make eye contact, I know, okay, you gotta make you gotta make your moves. So as he comes down, he sees you in the corner, eye contact. Now you gotta you gotta come up. That's the communication, the timing. It also depends what type of offense you're running. If you're going right into a set, or if you're going into a transition, or if you're going into pass cut fill, you'll have different cues of when to come up. Well, because okay, so okay, so um, can you get on the baseline for a sec? Yeah. Marco. So if, if if I'm here and he's dribbling up, okay, block, try and cut up. Okay, so here, deny, what are you going to do? Okay, what would you do? Yeah, back cut, back cut, okay? If I'm playing them a little bit, uh, go back again. If, I, if I'm playing a little bit tighter like, a, like here, he might come into me, come into me now, come into me, bring me in, and pop out. There, there's a V cut, there's a V cut, all right? So it depends on what this person is doing, all right? If you can free cut and get on the blast cut, that's ideal, but... Kids get pretty smart to it after a while. Girls or guys, it doesn't matter. All right? So we, we, tell, we tell this person here, try and initiate some contact. If, if I'm playing on the line here, okay? If I'm playing on the line, come Passing in. Passing line. Get into me. There. There. Now, now, it's a bet. now you can spin. Okay, yeah. Okay, you can pop out. Or, or you can just seal me. Just yeah. seal me and pop. Yeah, there. Step, just reverse like that. pivot. Yeah. Okay, so you teach those different situations Welcome. there, depending on what I'm doing. Okay, good question. All right, extreme overplay, back cut. All right, if I'm playing a little safe, blast cut. All right, but you gotta experiment with that. That's why live play teaches that too. And tell your kids, don't be scared to get beat. Get up there and deny. And be. That, well, that's a little bit different yeah. scenario. That's if, uh, that's if you're, maybe you start like Dan said, stacking down here. Hey, you know what, that L cut's a bit old school. Yeah. Because now everyone's playing four out, five out with spreading, so there's really no room to L cut. In the old days, you played three posts or two posts, three out, and there'd be a wing entry you want to get or a strong side post, and he'd just walk his man up, maybe not even to the red line, put step, boom, and we'd run offense all in this tight space. Now it's so far out. It, it, it's changed a lot. Yeah. So you sprint to the corner, and basically the read is a blast cut or a back cut. And if he goes then I may take that spot with the ball and we just kind of keep moving to the next thing. And so it's always a lot of movement, a lot of cutting, a lot of ball movement. You just have to read. So it's called read and react. That's what the offense is called. So it's, uh, again, there's layers to it. There's a lot of stuff on the internet. The first one would just be spacing and cutting and back cutting. Then there's handoffs, screening and cutting. So you can kind of build up to how much time you have. But you can for sure get into the transition to your spacing and then entries and a few cuts and some handoffs. You get enough done to be functional. It's pretty quick offense you can put in. What's that? And most youth teams run that now. It's kind of what everyone does. It's simpler, it's easier, it's just universal. But this stuff here, you may have the bigger kids inside, the small ones outside. The problem is if you do that in middle school, probably the big kids have a chance to have to be guards at university. And all they do is play in the block, right? So that's why this five out's a little more universal for skill set development. Anything else? Got some one-on-one -on -one stuff that I've been using lately that I like. 
So we'll do both ends. We'll keep you guys busy. Don't want to have you fall asleep on us. Marco Morelli. Not high school anymore. You can't fall asleep in class. Okay, so let's, uh, we'll get a ball and a partner. Same size and speed and ability because you're going to be playing one-on-one. -on -one. We'll set up, I don't know if we need two ends. I'll set up two ends. We'll see how many bodies we get out here. Okay, so usually we do this at both ends of the floor. I'm going to do this tonight with my son's team. We do this, we have a, a Friday night skills night. All we do is some ball hunting, then we play one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, three and three. All these games are showing you. And their skill development, their compete is getting pretty good. And what we're kind of doing is we're doing less coaching, like coaching, talking to them, and letting them figure it out through the rules of a game or two. Just like whistle ultimate. Okay, so I need a ball and who's our first pairing? Ball and a partner. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. We'll pack our stuff up and we'll be back. Gonna leave this place. There we go. There's our first two. We're gonna play one on one. We start here. You're, you're dying here. You want you want to do this? Oh, I, I can tell you. Hey, come on over here. I know. So I know. we're good. But he's ball and a partner. Let's get here. I, I can, I can tell ball and a partner here. What we're gonna? I'll change this line here. Okay, sorry. Ball and a partner. We hands. we start in the baseline. She's got good hands. You notice that? You can you can pick kids. You you just got a knack. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the three-point line. Offense is on the inside of the three-point line. Actually, both of them do. Let's see, I'll be you for a sec. You're my, you're my partner. You're on the outside of the three-point line. Okay, this is a chase drill. So what this works on is just pushing the ball with your outside hand, even though it's a little illogical because the defender's on the outside. It's a little weird. Um, and then finishing under pressure. So we work on all this stuff, and what happens in the games at a youth age is kids miss a million layups because they don't practice working, finishing under pressure, under being chased, under bumped a little bit as someone trying to slap the ball as they're going up. So your job is as soon as I throw my first dribble out, you're live. And he's chasing. If I'm slow, you knock the ball, boom. You're running right beside me. And you have to, your job is you have to run around that dot, outside dot. I run around the inside dot, and I hairpin it, so let's go. I'm in front of him. Yeah, I'd be in front of you. Turn, you're running this way. Don't shuffle. You're running. You're running because we get around this dot. I'm going to plant. I'm going to throw it out to the rim, and you're chasing me. And I'm trying to get a finish before he comes and blocks it. So I'm working on pressured finishes. Okay, ready? A little, a little faster. Oh, you guys can do it. Yeah, you guys can hurt each other instead of me getting hurt. Okay, so you're both behind the end line. Again, after he throws his first dribble, so he gets a little bit of a head start because otherwise, as soon as I dribble, you'd be tapping the ball. You try and tap it like I'm sprinting. And I'm trying to pop that ball. And then I got to go around my cone. As soon as I hit here, bang, I'm chasing. Maybe I'm blocking up high or stripping down here. So he's under pressure, and he's got to go in. And usually outside hand, inside foot layup. You're finishing. This will be right-handed layup. Okay, whenever you're ready. Hairpin it tight. Good, good. And then we'd flip-flop. Offense, defense. Next group would go. Okay. Okay, whenever you're ready. Oh, yeah, Good. Yeah, yeah. Wrap. And get a finish. Good. Next uh, group would go. Pretty good. Yeah, it's smart. You can tell. Hey, let's get one, two, three. You guys are down there. Three groups there, three groups here. Here's your ball back. I got it. There you go. Get a few reps. Yeah, he just gets it. Offense dictates the start. Yep. Chase him, get around the cone, go around your dot, around the outside dot. A lot of jogging shoes in this floor, no court shoes. Uh -huh. Got to go around your dot. Ball handler, you got to go around your dot too. Yeah. Whoa, sorry. This is a little tight. Big strong boy. Got to go around your dot, around your dot. Go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Follow the arc. Follow the arc. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're on a train track. You're a roller coaster right now. Until you clear the dots, you've got to follow the arc. Offense on the inside of the line. So offense is on the inside of the three-point line. It's like you guys are little go-kart racers. This is your track. This is your track. As soon as she throws the dribble, you can move. 
Chase, chase around the arc, good. Good, get there, get there. Oh, she's coming for you. Oh, she pressured her into the finish. No, straight chase, yeah. Just the body control, finishing. No, yeah. What? It's at the other end. Not yet. Okay. I'm going to get your footwork down first, and then we'll go for that. Tap it. Oh, got him. Good. You could have got it. Is he your principal or something? You could have tapped. He's just about to steal it, then he backed off. So, yeah, they're good. Okay, right? so stop. Hey. Like for you, it'd be easy. If you, have your, oh, yeah, you, you guys go there, left hand. You guys go there, left hand. Yeah. Be a little more fun. Get around your dots. Same thing. Now we're working on our left hand dribbling and left hand finishing. Cheated. The defender cheated. I saw him. You got to go around your dot. This is your dot here. Quite often we do. That's his dot. Stole his lane. Let's go. Get around your lane. Get her now. Get her. Get her. Yeah. Good D. With jogging shoes sliding all over the place. Good. Get her. Get her. Get her. Ah, good contest. Good. We struggle to make layups all that time. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Okay, stop. Stop. So normally we do like three minutes per side, six minutes worth of basketball, or four, and then we'll add, a, we'll add another load. So part of the coaching clinic series, we talk about loading. We did that last year, loading, um, progressions, error detection, error correction. We talked about that last time we are here. So this load, how to load this drill, we take, Whoever shot, who was the last shooter? Was it you? You? Last shooter? Yeah, you give the ball to him. Yeah, you're on D. You get the joy of playing defense. So now there's a defender. It's one versus two. So you turn around. I'm on you? Yeah, no, no. You're, on, you're helping out whoever's on defense over here. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, so I'm you turn around. Next. His rule is, and you can limit it however you like, okay. he can't go outside the paint. So he can't be waiting here for you to turn the corner. You know, this is even a little close. You might even say red line. You might say white line. Whatever you as a coach feel that allows this person to come off, make a quick read without having a guy in his way, and then score in and out, be tricky, working your finishes. You know there's someone chasing you. You know there's someone in front of you. And you got to figure out how to score. So it helps build the creativity of the athlete. Okay, a little, little free play without us giving them too much structure. Let's see a demo here. You ready? You're still chasing. Hey, hey, behind the line. Whoa, there we go. First dribble, he gets the head start, yeah. Outside hand, good. Attack him, attack him, attack him. She's right behind you. Score it. All right, now we rotate. The shooter, shooter stays on D. Next two off, next two ready. Got it, let's get one here. Let's get a defender there. Same drill. Anytime you're ready, offense on the inside, defense ready. Chaser, chaser. Figure it out. How are you going to beat this guy? Pull up jumper. Okay. You can shoot. Wrong hand, outside hand, you got to dribble with. Left hand dribble over there, guys. Left hand dribble. Where's our D? Hey, it was our shooter. Okay, so sometimes you'll see the kids will round the corner and they see the defender and they shoot right away. So you could put rules in where you say the first minute or two, everything has to be a finish going to the rim. Extended finish, floater, or layup. Then you can maybe say, you got to get feet in the paint before you can shoot. So I got to attack downhill, 
and then maybe I could step away or pull up. And then the third one could be to score however you want to score. Right? So you don't always just bail them out. They're not learning, they're not learning their full skill set if you allow them just to curl, huck up a piece of garbage and go to the end of the line. Make them do all different things by modifying your game. Okay, we're good. I won't kill you. We've got a lot more chasing to do. All right? Here's the next one. Bring this line over here. This is a, this is a half court chase drill. Okay. Offense gets a slight advantage. Very similar. Here are the lines. We're going this way now. Offense here. Defense here. Let's leave one in the hole. Leave one in the hole. Uh, be the same thing. Yeah, you guys just flip your dots going that way. Offense has the ball on the outside. Defense on the inside. A little more traditional, like a real game. The first thing we normally do is we do chase, just finishes with a sprint. We don't have a defender. Okay, but right now we'll just jump right to the defender piece for time's sake. Keep moving along. So you do you do one-on-one -on -one finishes and switch. You can even do a circle. Just kind of keep going around the floor and just offense, defense, and flip sides, right hand, left hand. And then we add the defender. So we're doing the same thing. Slight advantage for the offense. So I got the ball. You're ready and you're dot. As soon as I... Extend and go, it's live, there's no faking. As soon as I move, boom, I gotta figure out how do I beat these two guys. And again, are the rules, do I have to get a layup? Do I have to get feet in the paint or can I pull up early? That's up to you as a coach. You put in the rules and they figure out. So right now we'll say you just gotta get to the paint. Somewhere in the paint to do something. Care to see a demo? Are you here? Wait for him. All right, that's your defender, you two could talk. What are you gonna do? Good, good. One on two, you can trap them. Good. Now he's figuring out how to score. Shooters on D, you two are out. Let's go. Shooters on D. Next group. Ready? No, you were my brother's there. I was going to Scotland. We went to Scotland in September there. Good. Shooters on D. Yeah, I think you just tell them, you got to get to the paint. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Start on the dot. Yeah, because they were going right after it. Start in the dot, yeah. So it's off a static, it's off a static start, right? Wait, wait, I kicked the dot by accident. Oh, come on. Yeah. Static start, static start, ready, go. Good. Good. Really? Where were you up north? You paid your dues, eh? Good. Uh, you know what? Wherever you go, it's what you make of it. Good. Right? Yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Uh, for the. For the. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Okay, see the ball. Okay, hold up. So we're gonna we're gonna move on, but just to so we kind of let you guys wobble and figure it out, depending on what your level is for your group. Uh, these guys are just all running and trying to run through each other and huck up a layup, right? You guys are a little more crafty over there, I saw. Well, I know, but you, so you, you, maybe there's a good time to teach them what they could do. So the first one could be I drive hard at the D, she's chasing, and maybe I do an in-out dribble and get a layup. That's something you could work on your ball handling and just want, want to know stuff so they could carry it over. What? Another one might be a crossover. So I come hard. I got an advantage on you. I'm not going full speed. Really? I got an advantage. She's right here. And I go hard one way and I cross and I go to the other side of the rim and get a finish. Okay? Yeah. So in out, keep it on the same side. Cross and attack, get some shoulders and get a finish. Another one could be where I attack the D and I drive him back and I step back and I shoot. Another one could be a Euro. We really see a lot of kids where they, they run, they go outside, inside, and they step through. I think I saw someone down there do that. All right? So you can work on different finishes depending on your level. You could add one a day or give them two and say you have to use one of these two, something like that. All right, so they get a little creative. Maybe they, have, they have to be shown, though, a little bit, right? Okay, and that's stuff you can work on one and all. Um, I've got to check my notes. Get a quick drink.